This photo right here is why this timeline that we are living in is the best timeline. I've been covering Final Fantasy XIV for over a year now, and I think this is the most wholesome story yet to be published on this channel. And if the meetings between these two Lala Fells on the screen here is foreign to you, let me explain the significance. Over here to the left, the Lala Fell is played by none other than Hiro Nobu Sakaguchi, the father of Final Fantasy, who spent over 20 years at Square creating the OG Final Fantasy as well as various other Final Fantasy numbered titles that you love. If you think about Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9, all the way to 10, all these favourite titles of the community, all made possible by Sakaguchi-san. And to the right here, in his favourite Minfilia outfit playing his Lala Fell, none other than Naoki Yoshida, the producer for Final Fantasy XIV, the critically acclaimed MMORPG that you and I both play. And this meeting right here in-game is history in the making. And why is that so? Because imagine leaving behind the most storied legacy in JRPG history, thinking that was the end of a long storied chapter, as Sakaguchi-san departed Square Enix about 19 years ago when he was 40 years old, only to find 19 years later the stories, the memories, the legacy that he created, everything he forged from Final Fantasy 1 to Final Fantasy 12 not only continued to live on, but is actually thriving in the MMORPG. Crafted by his successor Naoki Yoshida, who has on a few occasions expressed in public his admiration as well as his respect for Sakaguchi-san, whom he looks up to as a source of inspiration, as evident from their previous conversation at Tokyo Game Show. To be able to go through the world of 14 to see all the little tributes, references, and love letters that Yoshi P and team have painstakingly designed to pay tribute to Sakaguchi-san's work of the past, it must be an amazing feeling. And now, in the blink of an eye, Hironobu Sakaguchi-san has played Final Fantasy for a year, exactly a year. And I know this because right from the start, I've been covering his very wholesome Final Fantasy XIV MSQ playthroughs on this channel. In fact, Sakaguchi playing Final Fantasy XIV MSQs is one of the top playlists on this channel. You folks absolutely loved it. And to date, there's still so many people interested in what the father of Final Fantasy has to say about Final Fantasy XIV. But you know, if I were to pick my favourite moment of Sakaguchi's journey throughout the XIV MSQs, it has to be the moment when he did 5.3. And you might already guess what's coming. The very moment when he glamoured his Lala Fell to wear the OG Warrior of Light glamour, and then facing against you know who at the top of the Crystal Tower, who is also in the design of the original Warrior of Light from Final Fantasy 1, that bit absolutely melted my heart. To which I remember Sakaguchi tweeting out that he's sorry for beating the original creation of his. And at that point in time, he thanked everyone on his Twitter for following his journey in Final Fantasy XIV, which is really a great way to bring the entire circle to a close loop. He conceptualized the original Warrior of Light, and now he's a Warrior of Light himself, fighting the Avatar Warrior of Light himself. That's a great moment in XIV's history. I'll leave a link to the playlist in the pinned comments below if you want to look at his journey. But folks, what a crazy world we live in. Did Sakaguchi-san imagine that in 1987, some 35 years ago when he created Final Fantasy, the original one, did he imagine that the Warrior of Light will go on to become a 3D avatar in an MMORPG one day? Probably not. But yet, here we are in this timeline. And in case you're wondering why did Yoshi P and Sakaguchi-san finally meet in the game for the very first time, at least in public, Sakaguchi was actually celebrating the milestone of him hitting the exact one-year mark of playing Final Fantasy XIV with his community. And I remember it just like yesterday when Sakaguchi started playing Final Fantasy XIV. His first few tweets were about the troubles with regards to purchasing the game. He just couldn't figure out how to get the game to boot. And I guess that does send a funny message to Square Enix. After all, if the father of your franchise couldn't buy the game, they definitely should look into optimizing the front end for purchasing 14 and playing the game. But before we know it, within just a span of a month, Sakaguchi has already beat Shadowbringers. The man was absolutely hooked on the MSQ rides, and I followed his tweets every single day as he went through the process. And it was so clear that he wanted to beat Shadowbringers before Endwalker launch. And on launch day of Endwalker, just like other millions of Warrior of Lights in this universe that all started because of his original creations, Sakaguchi-san was there to fight the server boss at Endwalker launch. It is clear his passion for the world of Final Fantasy never waned, even at the age of 58. And what an amazing feeling it must have been for him to see his creations come to life in a 3D MMORPG world. In the in-game meeting with Yoshipi, he tweeted out and the journey continues. And how poetic is that statement? Given when Sakaguchi-san first created Final Fantasy, the title was literally labelled Final Fantasy because it was the final gambit 
by Square as a company, to which if the title failed commercially, that might be the end of Square, and there will not be a Final Fantasy franchise to speak of. And if that happened, you and I, on this video, on this channel, might have never crossed paths at all. And that is why Yoshipi wanted to show up to congratulate Sakaguchi-san. Because it's worth taking a pause today, reflecting and celebrating all the crystal tales that we shared as a community over the past decades, including the ones that Yoshipi played during his formative years. And as a fitting tribute, the people who join in on the photo operation were also dressed for the occasion. For example, in this picture, you can see that the characters are all glamoured after iconic Final Fantasy characters. You know, there's Cloud, Tifa, Squall, Yuna, you name it, they're all there. And not only are they in the correct glamour, they are also arranged in sequence from the left to the right of Final Fantasy titles. And I honestly cannot think of a more fitting tribute for Sakaguchi-san's first year in Final Fantasy XIV. Though the money shot is probably what you see on screen here, Sakaguchi-san and his fans of Final Fantasy XIV in the background cheering him on as his Lalafell interacts with Yoshipi's Lalafell. A picture for which he tweeted out later that he received words from Yoshipi that he was grateful for. Now for those of you who don't know what Sakaguchi-san has been up to since he beat the MSQ, Sakaguchi has been living out his life as a RP crafter of sort, starting out his imaginary luxury branded good company named Sakaguchi. Obviously a pun on the fashion brand Gucci. He will craft all these cool looking glamour sets for the people in his community and he will basically hand it off to people in his community who will then join him in various raids and they will all wear the same glamour set and they'll do a big photo operation after that that he'll post on Twitter. It's a very wholesome story, you should check it out. And if you receive the glamour set from him, the piece will literally say it's crafted by Saka Gucci. So you're owning a piece of history here. Hopefully it doesn't give Mr. Square Enix any wrong ideas about NFTs. But jokes aside, if you think that was the end of the wholesome story, well, you might be wrong. And I will be completely happy to be wrong as well. Because on the 8th of October, during the next 14 hour live broadcast schedule, the very same day they will do the next producer live letter, there will be a dedicated section where Yoshi P and Sakaguchi-san actually get to chat and speak about everything Final Fantasy XIV. And I honestly cannot wait for that because the last time Yoshi P and Sakaguchi-san spoke on the same panel, it was at the previous Tokyo Game Show. And I remember Sakaguchi-san jokingly saying that maybe I will help you write some side story or some quest lines in Final Fantasy XIV or XVI. To which Yoshipi was also jokingly very receptive of. But can you imagine, let's say in the future, a Final Fantasy XIV Alliance Raid questline written by the father of Final Fantasy himself? What an awesome collaboration that would be. And honestly, it makes me very excited to think about the possibilities for the franchise. Sakaguchi has also on previous occasions heaped praises upon XIV, often calling it a theme park for Final Fantasy, which I thought was a really apt analogy. The game doesn't force you to do anything in particular. It's entirely up to you what you want to do in the game, whether you want to PvP, what kind of level do you want to do PvE raids in, do you want to RP, do you want to be a crafter, do you want to master fishing, do you want to play Mahjong at the Gold Saucer, it's entirely up to you. So I can definitely see a part of the segment where Sakaguchi-san and Yoshi-P discusses the current state of the game, and it might be interesting to see what Sakaguchi-san has to say about whether he has any ideas on how Final Fantasy XIV can move forward as Yoshi-P continues to further on his legacy. The other major takeaway I have just watching Sakaguchi and Yoshi-P's Lalafell meet in-game is also how fast time flies. It seems just like yesterday Sakaguchi-san started playing Final Fantasy XIV, and I remember making the very first video on that. And to think that one year has flown by since then, it also reminds us of the fact that Endwalker is almost at its halfway mark already, with patch 6.25 scheduled to be released somewhere within the next month. And I was looking through the timestamps of the video I published on Sakaguchi doing the MSQs and it struck me, where the hell did all the time go? It seemed like just yesterday we were waiting for the servers to go up on Endwalker launch. But to quote Sakaguchi-san's parting tweet, the journey continues and here's to many many more years of great Final Fantasy XIV together. And I count my blessings every day thanks to Sakaguchi-san, you, the viewer and I have the chance to cross path on this channel and it's only possible because of the OG Final Fantasy. And if you'd like to follow me on this unending journey for Final Fantasy XIV, do subscribe to the channel that will mean absolutely the world to me. I stream on Twitch on a regular basis, feel free to swing by to say hello. And lastly, a happy first year anniversary to the father of Final Fantasy for playing XIV. The journey will definitely continue.